Hi, I'm Delta Work, and it's time for an episode of Very Merry Delta. Radio superstar and Christmas maniac Nick Pagliocchini is here with me today. But do you want to see me go off? Because I think you want to see me go off. M. Oh. M. Mom! Do you slay queen like me? Do you wear poinsettias like me? Ooh. Do you flock your tree like me? Do you want to come down my chimney? Are you a mistletoe like me? Are you a nutcracker like me? Well, if you are, you must be very Merry Delta. Hi, I'm Delta Work, and this is Very Merry Delta, a luxury public access podcast and YouTube talk show where I look gorgeous, speak extemporaneously, and invite interesting people to sit on the couch and get Very Delta. Very Delta is for the woman who will use a bottle of Wild Country by Avon to freshen up the bathroom. Today's show is out of control, but in a tasteful way. But first, let's get into some things that are very Delta. You know what's missing at fast food restaurants? A universal pride in French fries. I feel like restaurants launch new hamburgers, new chicken sandwiches, new salads, but they stick with the same old French fries. And some of them have been tried and true for a very long time. I feel like McDonald's universally has been the place that has the best reviews for their French fries. People like them because they're crispy and they're buttery and they're uh, salty and they're long and they come in a big container. But they've sort of rested on their laurels and a lot of other fast food restaurants have sort of moved in that same direction, which is serving French fries as a side item to a a full combo. So obviously a combo would have like the sandwich, the French fries as the option, and then the drink. So 33, 33, 33. But usually because they make such big batches of these French fries, they kind of just sit around for a while and there's not really like a pride. It's like they cook them at the minimum length of time that they can in order to still serve them. So they come out like a little bit too moist, a little bit greasy. The greasy, the grease and the salt mixed with that sort of like sort of flaccid French fry. Like that doesn't, that doesn't, that's not appealing. I don't know why there's not a universal cooking time for French fries across the board. So maybe there's say six different fryers across the fast food companies. They need to like calibrate them all to say in order for your french fries to be crispy and greasy and salty and delicious they have to cook for this amount of time so when people order them you have to cook them for six minutes or eight minutes or however long it is there has to be universal cooking time so that you always get french fries that are crispy and fresh the thing is that because people are worried about these sandwiches and how great these sandwiches are and how good their fries are have always been, I feel like they are not revisiting the fries to say, how good are our fries? Like, are are they really, are they still a compliment to the sandwich? And then oftentimes, French fries are sort of the go-to when, say, you're in a car full of people and some people are saying, I'm going to have a combo with a a Coke and somebody's going to have a salad with a Sprite. And then there's always somebody that maybe is not going to eat something. And they're like, well... Just get me some fries. Like fries will be fine. I'm not that hungry. So fries will constitute like the full meal. If that's the case, then their 33% of a meal, which is now their whole meal, is going to be shit if it's greasy, salty, and wet. Like it's just that flabby sort of phalange French fry. Like who wants to eat that? Why is there not why aren't we proud of these? Like we need these companies need to across the board say we're going to take pride in our french fries. I feel like Wendy's has done that. Wendy's has stepped up. They have a certain kind of french fry. They have the sort of natural cut uh well they did for a while anyway, the natural cut, which became a thing. I don't know if it was like a marketing thing where some places were saying like our french fries aren't as bad for you because they're natural cut. So you should have these. You know, you've always heard from 
parents and 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 uh, family members that like, oh, eat the skin of the potato, baked potato, because that's the healthy part. That's where the vitamins are. So I think when people started to make French fries um, as like, you know, Wendy's or, or other places and would say uh, natural skin, it, it's sort of a marketing ploy to make people think, well, it's not that bad. I mean, if I'm just having fries and they're natural cut, I mean, I'm getting some vitamins in. I think it, it does work that way for some people. Uh, you know, also, too, I feel like hand in hand with this is like the idea of ketchup or ranch dressing as a dipping sauce. I think maybe ranch dressing is kind of an American thing as far as a universal dipping sauce. Because, you know, let's be honest, when people eat ranch dressing, um, no matter what they're dipping into the ranch dressing, it's not really about what they're dipping into it. It's that that is just the conduit to sort of carry the ranch dressing. So no matter what it is that you're eating, it's going to be flavored like ranch dressing. So you could probably honestly fold up this card right here. And if the ranch dressing was good enough, I could dip it in there and eat it. And really, I, I would think it was a Pringle, you know, a Pringle dipped in ranch dressing. It, it could be that. Um, I just feel like there, there's there got to be more of a focus across the board. My own company, Deltaco, is very, uh, is very uh, responsible for the, or needs to be held responsible for this. I, I, I've gone to several locations, and I'm telling you right now, a crinkle-cut fry that's cooked just as long as it needs to be, to be really crispy, that's covered in salt, that's like fills up that whole container like this. Like, you know, I've said it before. You have to scoop the fries in, and you have to go like that. And if you can't see them out here, you got to put some more in until the fries are like that. Here's your fries. And when each one is so crispy that it's almost hollow, that's that's how crispy it needs to be. Del Taco is not doing that across the board. And when they do, it's great. When they do, it's excellent. But when they don't, and that's pretty often, it just tastes like somebody got a bunch of mashed potatoes cold and just packed it in there and said, here you go. No pride. No pride in those French fries. You're treating your French fries the way that you see them. And that is as a secondary option to the feature, which is the sandwich. But it, everything should be highlighted. The soda needs to be calibrated with the perfect amount of, uh, uh, of carbonation and sweetness. The French fries need to be crispy, salty. All of this plays hand in hand. I don't know why the hamburger is treated like it's more than 33%. I personally only dip my French fries in ketchup or catsup. I don't know the difference between ketchup and catsup, but I know there has to be a difference. Uh, I do like fry sauce, which um, is uh, is almost like a thousand island dressing. I like that. I don't normally dip my fries in ranch or just mayonnaise, although some people do. My number one go-to is going to be ketchup, and then from there is going to be fry sauce. I think those are my best options. There was a point where Burger King did introduce their sort of zesty dipping sauce for onion rings. And and for me, listen, I love Burger King onion rings. I like any kind of sort of panko fried onion ring. That's my first that's my first go to for an onion ring. Um, if the onion ring is good, it doesn't need a dipping sauce. But some people like it because, again, it's just that carrier to get the that sauce in there. Some people like to put the fries in there. I feel like maybe it was less work for Burger King to address their French fry situation. I think it was going to take too much work for Burger King to address the French fry situation and the quality. And it was going to be easier for them just to reconfigure two or three different things from the factory and say, here's a new sauce for our onion rings that are more expensive than the French fries. So now everyone will just buy those and they're going to have the French fries by default because if they order a combo, they're going to have to have French fries anyway. There's a lot of fear and anxiety that surrounds uh, sauces at a restaurant and sauce policy. McDonald's seemed like they were the first ones to sort of lay down the law and say, this is how many sauces come with a six piece nugget versus a 10 piece nugget. And then so you're determining, OK, if they tell me this is how much sauce I'm going to get, this is how I need to appropriate it for each piece of fried meat. Um, Jack in the Box has 
always had this open door policy about sauces. We have the sauces. Pick as many sauces as you want. I mean, I think they probably have more sauce flavors uh, than any other fast food place from ranch dressings, avocado dressings, uh, salsas, red hot, um, uh, teriyaki sauce. They've got... um, Sweet and they have so many sauces, and their policy forever was just tell us how many you want. And they would always offer up too, like, what kind of sauce do you want? No matter what you ordered, the policy was so liberal and the policy was so constant that even if you went up and just ordered a drink, it was ingrained in them to ask, Would you like sauce? And which is a great thing, but now. I guess people have realized how expensive that is or how often uh, their guests abuse how many sauces they're really going to need or because the policy was always so open-doored and there was never a let's just give a few at a time. Now a lot of locations have signs up that say sauces are not free anymore. You can have a certain amount of sauces per thing, which is brand new from Jack in the Box. I've never seen that before. Not every location, but a lot of locations do have a like a printed up individual location sign. So it doesn't have like letterhead on it it doesn't have the logo so maybe these are i guess franchised in a way um not sure what that policy is taco bell does a similar policy um also to like this is a side note i don't know why that diablo sauce at taco bell has to taste so citrusy it has a citrus taste to it i like hot sauce but i don't know that i think a salsa could have a citrus taste but i don't think Actual hot sauce needs to have citrus in it, but that's just me. You know, Burger King introduced the chicken fries, and when they came out, they were delicious. They were such a great option. I mean, it was really, in my mind, just their dollar forty nine for ten chicken nuggets just reformed into a different shape, and so it seemed interesting and it seemed new. Now, you know, I have to say, aside from their hamburgers, pretty much everything else at at Burger. Pretty much everything at Burger King kind of tastes freezer burn to me. I don't know. It didn't used to be that way. It used to be amazing. Um, Again, the chicken fries were amazing. And then they immediately went to zero for me. Like 0.2 maybe just because out of 10, just because of the shape and like the ability to dip them in something. But I also feel like there's not a, there needs to be a more universal approach to barbecue sauce. I mean, everyone can have their own recipe, but. Some of those barbecue sauces are just too tomatoey. Do you want to see me take a break? I think you want to see me take a break. I'm so excited about today's episode. My extra special guest is someone I've known for a very, very long time, but also admired from afar for many, many reasons. Please make welcome the one and only from Coast 103.5, where Christmas begins basically in January and lasts all year <laughs> long, the one and only Nick Pagliocchini. Thank you very much, Delta. I appreciate it greatly. Thank it's you good for to be being here. here. Absolutely. We didn't even uh, talk, but we're coordinated. No. In fact, the funniest part is, so Delta and I go back many, many years to a nightclub in Buena Park called Oz. Mm-hmm. And in that nightclub, there was a lounge singer whose name was Rudy De La Moore. Mm-hmm. And he always um, taught us young queers to make sure you showed up and make sure that you had uh, an appearance and made sure that you even had costume changes. So in a Rudy De La Moore fashion, whoosh. Yes. I've got my uh, addition to our matching here okay. with our little plaid uh-huh. ensemble. Yeah. Let me see. Put your head down like this. Okay, it's got little ears. So, so this two- is my yes, as and as we'll cover, I'm a very big Disney file. Yes. And I do a lot with Coast 103.5 and with iHeartRadio. And I also do a lot with the Disneyland Resort. So, yes, you do. So that's I'm I've you know, my fit today is very much that. Now is Mickey your favorite character, or if you could pick like three favorite characters? So it would be Sorcerer Mickey is mm-hmm. definitely my favorite. Um, and that has always been because of Walt Disney Imagineering. That's their mascot. And mm-hmm. I've always loved I did work for the Walt Disney Company from ninety eight through two thousand three. Okay. And so I was a cast member. And with that being said, I always had dreams and aspirations of moving to Imagineering and being up in Glendale and doing all of that. So it was uh, kind of my inspiration, I guess you would say. Mm -hmm. Beyond that, it's all about Disney villains. 
And that, okay, that, okay. that goes to my birthday is Halloween. Mm -hmm. uh, but I would say Hades, probably from Hercules. I love Hercules overall as a, a Disney film. Hades is fantastic. Uh, the go to is a Maleficent and the Evil Queen when she becomes the hag. Um, but I love some of the even more obscure characters. Um, obviously, Corella Deville is a lot of fun, and she's had both the animated version and now live action. Maleficent uh -huh. has had the same. Um, but trying to think of, like, I never liked Aristocats because I'm allergic, deathly allergic to cats. And so that's why you don't like it. I don't like <laughs> cats. But the villain from there, and I cannot remember her name for the life of me. This is one of those moments where I'm like, I need to Google. But um, she's great. Yeah, I like that. The thing is, you uh, your birthday is obviously Halloween. Mm -hmm. and, and you work all year long. You're extremely busy, but you really, really... Uh, come to life and are in demand from Halloween all the way through the holidays. Right. Tell us about that, what you do. So it's funny if you say that now. Let me do my next little fun magic thing. Okay. I brought a gift from my husband Brian and I. We have Brick House Creative. And so this kind of embodies just what Delta talked about. So it is actually, if you look on the bottom, it's a skull or a calavera. Yes. And then you've got poinsettia on top. So you've got the whole thing here between Halloween and Christmas, all embodying one. Not Nightmare Before Christmas, but it's our nightmare. So it works. Oh, but this is for thank you. you. This You're is welcome. Gorgeous. Of course. Oh my and God. Um, yeah, Halloween is being born on Halloween. You kind of, it's the, <laughs> it's a gay high holy day. That's number one. Uh -huh. Always the case. I'm trying to decide where I want oh, you're fine. it. I'm going to put it right here. Put so it here. That's fine. It. No, that's fine. I love that. As a child, it's the best holiday. You don't get screwed like you do for Christmas. Right. You get all the gifts in the world. Uh, everybody parties for your birthday as a child. You get candy. As you grow older, the candy becomes alcohol or other paraphernalia. And so it's a really good experience that uh -huh. way. Um, but as I've gotten older, I've also found opportunities within that to be able to do my 31 days of Halloween teas, which right. I partner with different companies for that. Um, uh, so if anybody wants to kick me some Halloween merch or anything to that effect, I'm definitely willing to uh, rep for you. But um, no, it's it's fun. It's unique. It's different. And I like it because it's an approachable platform for me to open doors, mm -hmm. to open doors and have conversations with people. And because, you know, who doesn't? I mean, granted, there are many people that don't like Halloween for right. things that it embodies. But generally speaking, the vast majority of people really can get into it. And then that just naturally transitioned in Thanksgiving and Friendsgiving. And then we go into Christmas. So. Right. Right. I think there's a lot of people who. Um, uh, so, like as far as Christmas goes, for many reasons, family, uh, finances, whatever, will say like, I don't like Christmas because right. they think of the financial <clears throat> obligations. Mm -hmm. They think of the um, the obligations to pe being around people that make them uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. um, but many of us enjoy it because we can claim it for what we want it to represent. Right. Do you know what I mean? And I know 100%. you're that I know you think that way as well. I definitely do. And I think what's interesting, kind of going over to one of my other stations, which is KFIM six forty, um, we do pasta thon every year. And Michelle Cube, who is the spear leader or the spearhead of that and our executive producer over at KFI, uh Pasta Thon is a partnership with Katarina's Club in uh, Orange County mm -hmm. and they feed um, hungry they feed hotel children. Okay. And so what it is, it was Bruno, uh, Bruno Tamioli? No, 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 no. That's the guy from Dancing with the from Stars. From Dancing with the Stars, yeah. yeah. No, Bruno, oh, Serato. There we go. Br Bruno okay. Serato. Um, he owns a beautiful restaurant in Anaheim called The White House. Yes, and it's he, gorgeous. And his, he and his mother, um, who has since passed away, Katerina, uh, used to feed hotel kids. So these are kids that live long term in hotels mm -hmm. and go hungry many, many times. And so um, a few a good number of years ago, Pastathon was started with KFI. And I think I've always been from a very young age uh, encouraged by my parents to really kind of dig deep. And holidays don't need to have money. Halloween doesn't need to have money. I don't right. need the 31 days of Halloween teas to have a good time. Right. Um, it is what you make of it. And I think that that's the biggest part. And so going over to many, many charities that I worked with, but specifically with Katarina's Club now, uh, it's an opportunity for people to come together and give of their time. Do you think you know more about pasta because your last name is Pagliocchini? <laughs> and three years of living in Naples, Italy. So there yeah. There you go. Um, yeah. Yes, I would say pasta and carbohydrates have always been a thing for me. What's your favorite pasta? You I can... love penne. Penne. Uh -huh. um, um, penne regatta is specifically penne that has the ridges on it. Yes. And so the reason for that is it absorbs a lot of the sauce mm -hmm. that you're working with. 
Um, so bolognese would be my favorite sauce. Although when I worked at Disney, I worked at the Plaza Inn on Main Street. Okay. And to this day, they're known for pasta. And they have uh, chicken alfredo, which mixes deliciously with their bolognese sauce. Mm-hmm. And if you want to save a few bucks, give the kids meal portion. That makes sense. That makes so. sense. Can I? I keep looking at you, and I keep looking at the Mickey and the ears, and I have to confess something to oh, you okay. that I'm probably going to get in trouble for. Okay. I am born and raised in Southern California. Okay. I live mm, maximum 20 minutes from Disneyland. Okay. I've only been to Disneyland twice in my life. Once when I was six and once for grad night and I stayed on the bus. What, okay, wait. Let's talk about staying on the bus. Because I got into an argument with my friends that I was going to uh-huh. hang out with. So I was like, fuck it. And I just Shut. stayed on. So I, okay. and, and my all of my friends are like, let's all go to Disneyland. And I'm like, I don't want to go walk around the carnival. And they're like, girl, stop it. It's so good. See? Okay. And the thing that compels me to want to really go is... Um, Somebody said they have really good clam chowder. <laughs> I will make you really good clam chowder and save okay. you the money for going. Okay. The reason to go to Disneyland is for the experience of it all. And it is a very expensive experience. And I respect and understand that. And that was when I was a Disneyland cast member and I've embodied it to this day because uh-huh. Disney was my first job. Okay. So I started working there in 98 through 2003. And I did the expanded resort project. So I helped open Disney California Adventure. I worked with okay. all the operating partners at Downtown Disney. Food and beverage was my background. Again, I hired in at Plaza Inn. So I started out washing dishes and bussing tables there. And then I joined the Disney University about a year later, where I actually taught the classes of food safety and how to become a cast member and everything to that effect. The experience there, people save for decades, you know, and it sounds ridiculous now, but people, you know, save. We'll say a decade, 10 years, a family of four. Mm-hmm. You're looking at a couple thousand dollars. And right. a lot of people are don't have that money. Right. But the experience that Disney has provided and does provide as opposed to a carnival or something a little bit less. Now, let's not get it twisted. I'm also an annual pass holder at Knott's Berry Farm. And I do love Cedar Fair, who owns them. But, but do you go to the carnival? But I do go to the carnival because who doesn't love a good funnel cake? Yeah. And who doesn't love some true. cotton candy? That's and there's a true. lot of things, and who doesn't like, you know, that kind of hot guy that's running the Ferris wheel with one eye that looks the wrong way. Sure. But oh, sure. All of these are experiences Carnies. with it. Exactly. Right. And sometimes it's not the right fit. And some people are more Six Flags people. Mm. Um, but, you know. I'm a... Uh... I, I'm a salad bar person. Are you, <laughs> let's take okay, a break. Can we talk about how much I hate? Let's do. Yeah, take let's that take break. a break. Yeah, that's good. And we are back. We are back with my extra special guest, the one and only Nick Palacchini. But I, I, I keep thinking about like, you know. You found your 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 voice, and I say that like philosophically, sure. because you have your foot in two different communities. You know, you have your foot in a, in a very professional in the media, mm-hmm. where um, you know it, it can be a place uh, conservative. It can be a place where professionally you always have to be behaving right. a certain way. Right, of course. Um, but but beyond the philosophical voice, your literal speaking voice. When did you realize this is something that I could do? As a job. I think it was something that I was passionate about. So when I, I'm a born and raised Southern Californian, mm-hmm. and uh, I was born at San Antonio Hospital in Upland. Okay. And I grew up in Altaloma, in Rancho Cucamonga area. And uh, when I was about 12, we moved to San Diego. Mm-hmm. And I lived in Poway, North County, off the 15. That's so weird. When I was when I was a kid, we moved to Escondido. Oh, and see, then so North County, yeah, yeah, here. yeah. Okay, so that so that's the same thing. Like I'm just you know Riverside, San Bernardino, yeah. L.A., Orange, all that. Um, so when I was down there, there was a morning show that was the Jeff and Jer Morning Show Graham, mm-hmm. and it was on Q106. Yep. A lot of morning shows have a morning zoo format. Hey, hey, da, 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 like all that stuff and the very pukey voice and the sound effects. And the it's very much you're looking into this very like carnival-esque mm-hmm. fishbowl. And the Jeff and Jer Morning Showgram brought you into that fishbowl and made you a part of the family. Even yeah. though they were the number one station for years and the number one time, day, uh, day part for years in San Diego. And so before we moved to Naples, Italy, uh, because I was in San Diego for three years, I had started reaching out and being really interested in media. And I actually got to do a week worth of morning shows with Jeff and Jer. So I would get up every morning. 
at 3 o'clock in the morning, 3 to 3.30, would go in and do the morning show and then go to school afterward. So mind you, okay. I was in middle school at the time. Um, so that was it. And then I was hooked. Okay. Is there another hat? There is another hat. We can do another hat. Let's go uh, back over to the home office for a little bit. Okay. My very butch yes. existence. I Heart Radio. Yes. That's the song. That's it. No, you know the jingle. Yeah, you have to know the jingle. No, you do. And now But you... it's Coast 103.5. But what about... Now, uh, you know what? I don't want to say it because it could be the wrong station. Okay. We can cut it if it's the wrong station. Okay. But the one that has like the jingles where it'll be like pink singing, but it'll be like a pink impersonator. Oh, yeah. We have that on Kiss FM. Is that, is that, is that on Coast? No. We do... Uh... We have done those, yes. Where it's like... Um, Gwen Stefani has done that for us a few times. Because Gwen Stefani is... The last five years, Gwen Stefani has swapped over to Christmas for us. Right. And she and Blake Shelton um, recorded a single five years ago now for their Christmas album. It's so good. It's very good. It's so but good. But they did record a special version for us for Coast 103.5. Oh, okay. So, yeah. Yeah. What's your favorite Christmas song to listen to? A couple of them. No, no, no. No, I, no it's good. Um, you can't have one. I do love anything from Pentatonix. Oh, so good. All of their covers, all of their originals, um, and if we're talking the original Pentatonix crew and then the new Pentatonix crew. Um, oh, gosh. So much. I'm very old school, like, boom, 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 uh-huh. boom, 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 yeah. boom, boom, So, like, Bing Crosby, Perry Como, mm-hmm. um, any of those things. Like, I really do enjoy... I love the Rat Pack, but I do like the what I'm going to call Johnny Mathis, like the, the auxiliary... Okay. Yeah, yeah. Talent to that. It's not the Dean Martin or, um, oh God, what's his name? Why can't I think about it? It's not the Sammy Davis Jr. Frank Sinatra. Frank Sinatra kind of thing. Although I do love a good Nat King Cole, yeah. which is great. And John Legend just did like a, uh, has a cover of a Nat King Cole Christmas song. Okay. That he either came out with this year or last year. Anyway, which is really quite impressive when you're dealing with someone There's who's no longer with us. So, a yeah. song, you know, every single drag queen, of course, is going to perform whatever song is going to be popular. And so people mm-hmm. like to hear, of course, All I Want for Christmas is You by Mariah Carey. Yes. But there's every time I do a drag show, and I love doing Christmas songs, mm-hmm. even though the audience might not like it. Um, there is a song that's also called All I Want for Christmas is You that n- came out way before Mariah Carey, and it's by a group called Vince and the Valiants, and okay. they had a girl singer. And it's slightly country, and it's okay. sometimes pay- played on the radio station. Um, it's so good. You have to listen to the song. It's, I will it, definitely do that, and I will see if we can get it played on Coast. Why they, not? they do yeah. play it. I they th- do? Okay. Yeah. I'll have to so, look in our music library, yeah. So sometimes it's like one of those songs where maybe like, I'll be coming home from a show and like in the middle of the night. It's okay. like kind of a lost favorite, if that yes. makes sense. Like mm-hmm. that, or I always love hearing um, 2,000 Miles by The Pretenders. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. That'll come on sometimes. Got the, it. The, 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 the range of songs is so good. Like it's all, I feel like it's super inclusive. For Christmas, it's such a unique genre of music because of just what you said. And you can do so much with it. Mm-hmm. Um, you can kind of wax poetic and do your own thing. The thing that I was hoping you might say, which I've found very entertaining and have been, I can think of three drag queens who have done this, is I want a hippopotamus for Christmas. Uh-huh. It's a good which one. Which is a hilarious, I love a good comedy queen. Mm-hmm. I love an incredibly talented torch singer or stand and deliver, but mm-hmm. if you can pull out that comedy, sure. queen, because there's no nothing more annoying than that song. Right. And if you can make it your own and do so many things with it. Right. But yeah. Would you want a hippopotamus for Christmas? Uh, yes, I would love one. Yeah. I d- I don't want to deal with the upkeep and the maintenance. Well, here's a good question: mm-hmm. What? How? When do we determine when it's going to start and when it's right. going to end? Because it does vary sometimes a right. little bit. So the easiest thing for our benchmark here, uh-huh. because we partner with the Walt Disney Company and the Disneyland Resort so much, when Disneyland starts the holidays, so does Coast 103.5. Okay, that's kind of your benchmark. We have started as early as the 1st of November. This year we started on November 11th when the mm-hmm. Disneyland Resort swapped over. Um, there are There's Light 106.7, which is in Washington, D.C. They went live with Christmas, I want to say, even before Halloween had come wow. and passed. Not very long. Um, I would have to – no, granted, fact check me. That's probably what's happening now. Fact check me. Now you're wrong. But <laughs> uh, specifically – yeah, there's a lot of stations, but I think like when you say that, 
it's a unique embodiment because we give people permission to yes. experience Christmas. And I we all make the jokes that Halloween starts on July 5th. Right. And then somewhere in August is where Christmas starts anymore. Right. I agree. And the Costco and Sam's Club and Target and Walmart and all the retailers have trained us for that. So where when we were kids it was magical. Right. You know, I was never please I've had a plastic artificial tree my entire life, but you know, some people around the country it'd be like the day of Christmas or the week of Christmas or two weeks before you go cut down a Christmas tree. I uh, see I'm not with that. I I need it like I want it to last because it's 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 right. a season. It's now, a season. Would you have a, like a room in your home? Would you have like a Halloween room or a Christmas room theming wise? Is that if, too much? No, if I if I had the space for it, absolutely. Sure. No, if absolutely. you have okay. absolutely one million. Because percent. I think that's always it. And I my my life, I mean, it sounds funny. I'm wearing all this Christmas stuff and then I'm wearing Sanderson Sisters right. uh, shoes right now. Right. So I mean I'm kind of that Halloween to Christmas all the time. But um yeah, it's really interesting. And I think the thing that gets me, and you can go on any of our posts on Facebook or Instagram, Twitter that are specific to Christmas for Coast. Oh my gosh, I've been waiting all year. And I can't imagine that people can't give themselves permission to enjoy a self-indulgent Mariah Carey all I want for right, Christmas right. in June. Why are you still wearing that hat? Oh, hold on. Let me do one more. We need a costume change before a, we go to break. I'm a, hold on, let's do the whoosh, like Rita De La Moore. And now it's kind of that butch and oh, Disney. Oh, it's a gingerbread. So... I love that. Let me bring it break into a Santa, Little St. Nick's bag. Okay. So I have, now this is only because we were texting and uh, you were at the store. Uh huh. You were at Ross. Uh huh. And we were talking about um, our passion for holidays and things uh-huh. like that. And uh, I know that we both are very passionate about shopping and you can't see it off camera right now, but there's plenty of Target bags in this room. Yes, right now. they're everywhere. Uh, so the funniest thing is that this year, and uh, the setup is not conducive for it, but this year um, Target came out with a gingerbread kit that is specifically a Target store. You're kidding. So you can build your own Target store. Oh, so it's My your own gingerbread. God, how cute is that? So this, granted, we don't have the time to make the gift, but I wanted to we give. We don't. You, well, we could if you so choose. Oh my god! Or maybe that's this you know very so Delta sweet. after hours. But no pun intended. Right. <laughs> this is adorable. So, but I think that's hilarious. Is that meta? Kind of. I think so. Where you're building a gingerbread house over Target? Yeah. I like, think so. And I haven't checked into Walmart or any of the other retailers, but yeah, I think that's a you can build an entire village with Target. That is so cool. Let's take a break. Sounds good. We are back. We are back with Very Merry Delta. And this episode, we are chatting with Nick Pagliocchini from Coast 103.5. Well, this is the part of the podcast that I really am excited for you to be part of. I can't wait. This is the best. Like, this I'm really stoked for. Yeah, because sometimes, you know, sometimes people write in crazy stuff. This is, um, you know, read read me Delta. Read me Delta. Um, some people like to just call it letter hour Ooh. or advice column. Okay. But if you want to write one of these letters, you can send me a letter to readmedelta at gmail.com. You can send whatever you want, your questions, your queries. You can send, I don't know, a gift card. I feel like I'm like actually ripping the whole letter apart. Did it get put in wrong? Well, it, it got put in right. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, but what happens is that I'm trying to be delicate with my fingernails. Oh. Um, which, you know, I I had a gift for, for everyone. You brought a gift for me personally, but I had a gift for everyone. And that is, you know, I like to coordinate, not necessarily match. But, I mean, if you have nails that match exactly to your I dress. I'm I like, mean. It's fantastic. And where did you find them? Um, th- okay, so these nails were found at Dollar Tree of all places. I think that's the best part. My dress is from Eloquy. Eloquy, if you are looking or if you're watching, your dress is lovely. I love it so very much. I bought it with my own money. But if you want to send me dresses, Eloquy, yeah. I will be more than happy to wear your dresses. And those wild chandeliers. And these these are from a place downtown LA oh. called Something Special. Oh, fun. Okay. I always buy my earrings there and then I have to replace because I have clip ons. I don't have to Oh, okay. Ears. I get it. Okay. Yeah, I'm a wuss. I can't it's do okay. it. It's okay. Okay. Dear Delta and esteemed guest. 
Oh, it's you. Esteemed. God, they don't even know. <laughs> In my day-to-day life, I enjoy space. Because I'm a typically larger and somewhat private person, when I'm choosing a space in a restaurant or a waiting room, I prefer as much space and empty chairs around me as possible. However, there appears to be something in other humans' behavior which desires and craves a sense of closeness to others. Mm -hmm. This is lovely in theory, but I'm trying to privately, uh, if I'm trying to privately sweat or heavy breathe in private, (laughs) there's something which infuriates me about a stranger deciding they want to sit right next to me. For example, I'm currently in the gym and I do not want someone to choose the cross trainer next to me. But one of the others, uh, while one of the others is available across the rest of the gym, it's nothing personal. Am I being overly dramatic? Should I ask them to move? What should I do? Best wishes and happy holidays. Anonymous from Manchester, UK. P.S. We need a Delta Live International from the UK. Ooh, that'd be fun. Can I go with you? I would love that. I will be I your announcer that. or whatever you I need. would love that. I, that'd be amazing. Um, what about you? Do you like people around you? The, I mean, you- It's No, right. I you're mean, public, I, so- First to answer your question, yes, you're being dramatic, and there's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> I agree. Totally nothing wrong with that at all. But, um, yeah, I think being- There's a time and a place for intimacy, and there's a time and a place for space. It's a bit challenging when you're in a public spectrum or in a public location to be able to navigate that. Right. What What is your experience? Because I think for me, like I'm a bigger guy, Mm -hmm. and so I know uh, the funniest part that was when you were reading the letter. It came to me like theme parks are challenging. Mm. I mean, to the point where I respect 100% the safety necessity, but some of those restraints, even for me. I can't go on attractions. I can't right. go on rides. Universal Studios, I can't ride the Harry Potter ride because the the restraint won't allow me to fit in it. I see. And I'm a big dude, but not a big dude. Right, right. And it's kind of wild that way. So I understand it's a, one of those things that's more challenging to navigate. Well, I'm a small woman. So yes, I, know. You're um, very I have not had these problems at all. But if I did have these problems, um, where I actually where I do see this problem mm-hmm. uh, maybe isn't necessarily with people sitting next to me, but I never understand when you go into like a parking lot and there's like plenty of spaces mm-hmm. and you're parked in a spot, maybe to make a phone call sure. or maybe you're like I'm unwrapping this burrito or whatever it is, and then someone just pulls up right next to you and you're like, right. there's a million spots. Yes. In fact, considering you're getting out to go into this store here. Yes. You could have parked closer to the door, but you chose to come all the I don't know if it's a safety net. Maybe they're like, I'm worried about who's around me or. And that wouldn't be far off with right. what's happened in, you know, the last 10, 15, 20 years. Right. But yeah, that's an interesting. I don't know. Thought process. But I do. Yeah, I, I definitely if I go into a restaurant, I definitely like to be uh, in a corner sure. or. With your or, back to the wall, correct? So yes. You can see the whole. Yeah, I'm the same. I want to see everybody coming in. Yep, exactly. Um. Uh, I prefer that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't think like you said. Yes, you're being dramatic, but we're here for it. Absolutely. I mean, I think it's only fair. I'm very here for it. 100 yeah. percent. Yeah. All right, we have another letter that came through in Santa's sleigh. <laughs> That's the best. <laughs> the <laughs> best delivery straight from the North right? Pole, maybe from if we're the lucky. North Pole. I love it. Okay, so let's set that here. Let's see. Oh, I don't even have to use the letter opener. Oh, I do. Well, it's taped. So I can just. Can you use, use those fantastic nails? You know not? what? I'm gonna try. Okay. Okay. Oh wow. Okay. Dear Delta, uh, can you explain Yankee Candles? What are your favorites and why? Should I like Yankee Candles? Are Yankee Candles sexy? Who buys Yankee Candles? Should I buy Yankee Candles? Thank you, Very Tasha. <laughs> I I like Yankee Candles. Most recently. Um, if you don't know what Yankee Candles are, Yankee Candle is a company that exclusively makes candles and wax melts. And they probably have like, they probably sell like chafing or some sort of dish to put them yeah, in or they, burners. Yeah, the tart warmers or whatever they're called. Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. But, uh, you know, it's just a company. I, I most recently fell in love with Harvest Peach. Um, really? Sometimes I see them and I'm like... Because I buy so many candles at yes. like Burlington or Ross or something... I always think, like, I don't really want to pay full price for something that I might find there eventually. Okay. I can respect so, that. So, um, but sometimes things show up. And my friend Danae was, I, I posted, like, has anyone tried this candle? Do you like it? I posted it in my story. And my friend Danae um, 
just sent me one from Amazon. She was like, why don't you just buy it? I'm just going to buy it for you. You right. tell me if you like it. So I, I fell in love with that one. But I, I like um, candles that are like stronger. Okay. So anything spicy, anything that's like brown in color, red in color. Really? Yeah. The, the lighter it is, I feel like there's not enough payoff because I'm always, I'm always expecting the one candle uh-huh. to scent like the whole living room and dining room. No, that I agree with. I respect so that 100%. That, right? No, I think, so this is to, to kind of piggyback off of you. Mm-hmm. So Opal House, which is a brand with Target, uh-huh. have 10 and five and $10 candles. Yep. And they are always found predominantly on the end cap when yep. you walk into the store. And sometimes they're on the back of the end cap and they're half price. Yes, and that's, that's what I, I agree. Always but what's interesting, just like you referenced, I had to buy two or three of them uh-huh. because the, the fragrance doesn't permeate nearly enough. Right. For it me. smells good. It smells great. It's just not strong enough. No, exactly. Mm-hmm. And so, but I've got right now, I still have, I think it's Autumn Harvest from Opal House from Target in like the massive three wick candle. Uh huh. Um, funny going back to Yankee Candle, that is probably the store I avoid the most because it is such an assault on your senses because it's all of them together. All I them. love a good Yankee Candle that you buy at a retailer that's not Yankee Candle because mm-hmm. you can actually smell them. It's also a very, very much a gathering place for Karens. Oh, my God, it's yes. A, you, anything like that right. is going to be – Bath and Body Works, I mean, it's like – you you uh, when I go to Bath and Body Works, I almost have to go in with like scholarship paperwork. Oh, like, sure. I have, they're like, the women in there are like, what are you do, what are you doing here? I don't yeah. understand why you're in here. And it's if like, you go there, you just wear your asymmetrical wig and you'll be fine. Right, you'll like exactly. be right there with. So I only go to that, certain no, ones where I know that people I know it. that like, oh, you've been in here before. Right. Um, yes, Yankee Candles. I don't want to. I don't think. Well, there is one scent of Yankee Candle, and I think it's called like. Midnight or something that's kind of sexy. It, okay, but yes. I, I don't consider them a sexy brand per se. No, and I know that they have tried mm-hmm. over the years. Just the same with bed, um, Bath and Body Works. What's a sexy candle to you? What's I a think sexy something scent? that does have some smoke to it. Mm-hmm. Something that's a warm, just like you said. Um, there was a study a number of years ago from men specifically that lavender and pumpkin are the most sensual fragrances. I have heard this about pumpkin. And I think, right, and it's very interesting to think like, so you're looking, when you're thinking pumpkin, it's not necessarily pumpkin itself, and it's that more pumpkin spice of the clove and the cinnamon. That's why it's difficult and for me around this time of year. I bet. I, I, come into my, I come into my sensuality and my sexuality, and the men just, they're like... They smell the gourds imagine. on me. You know I, what I mean? I, oh, my God. <laughs> they smell. Oh, you're so gorgeous. Yes. Gorgeous. Yes. Oh, I my love gourd. It. Oh, my God. <laughs> yes, gourd. Yes. That's amazing. So, yeah. no, but that's, I think, and it, I think something that's down that, um, something that has tonka, which I've learned is a fragrance. It's They're kind speaking of my language over here. Oh, girl, I got it. Yeah. I feel you. Like, 100%. These are the right sense. Because you want something, and I think the thing that's always interesting you want to set a mood. Mm-hmm. You don't want to bowl people over. It's not for breeze after you you dropped a deuce. Right. You right. want something that kind of envelops your home or your mm-hmm. studio or your office or whatever. Do you use a spray after you drop a deuce? Oh sure. What would be like what's, most what's in the respectful right thing now? to do? I do use for breeze specifically. I, I do too. But I'm not what's your lie. scent right now? My scent at the moment predominantly is lavender, but uh-huh. when it's the holidays, it's pine. Whenever they have okay. that, like, and it's like. It's not just called pine. It's like called fresh and forest or some like unique name like that. Can I tell you what you need to get? Ooh. One's called wood. Okay. It's called Oh, I've wood. seen this. I have gone through Isn't it the one that has the faux wood graining on the- Yes. Okay, got it. Yes. And it's like Febreze Air or something. Yeah. Like, I don't know what it's called. It, 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 it does have a bit of a almost perfume. So okay. I'm like, oh, nobody wants to smell like that and perfume right. together. Yes. Like you want it to be sort of- Odor canceling yes. and then replacing, but not enhancing. Right. So I, my I fear is that some of them are like a bit enhancing, and I'm like, oh, this smells awful. You know? Do you ever use poopery? I do. We have poopery here uh, here in the studio. Yes. And um, you I know, saw. you can. There is even um, holiday ones you can get now. So as specific to that, last year for the morning show team, Ellen, Ryan, Darlene, uh, and Paulina, and myself, I actually got. Um, there's <laughs> poopery last year sold emergency socks. So they are snugly warm socks that have a pocket in them to put the bottle of poopery in so you're never without Goodbye. it. 
Yeah. Are you serious? I'm not kidding. I will. Oh, that's so smart. I, if I have some, I will be glad to gift it to you. <laughs> that is because the best. it was the best thing ever. And I want to say it was either the peppermint fragrance or it might have been like the Christmas tree fragrance. Mm -hmm. But that was it. So it was literally like the like you know crew socks, but they were warm and fuzzy. And they had a pocket on the outside, the kind of like thing. you would have like a pocket on underwear for condoms kind of idea. Okay. Like it was that concept. Right. Um, I don't think I've ever, I don't think I've ever seen underwear with a pocket for condoms. Ooh. We're going to go shopping because they have them for ladies and for gentlemen. Really? Yeah. Do you own them? Oh, yeah. Oh, oh absolutely. And it's funny is mine are like two exist has them. Uh huh. So more mainstream, but then if you want to go more obviously queer chic, it's like Andrew Christian has them. Uh, um, would they have them uh, in George by Walmart brand? Um, possibly, but I, uh -huh. if not that jockey, I'm, jockey, I'm fairly confident jockey does have it. I could see that. I could see that. <laughs> Thank you for being here. Oh my god, it's this been is amazing. so fun. Thank you. Well, I feel like we could just talk forever, and I mean, we, we really we could. Would. Yeah. Yeah. Because we barely hit the tip of the iceberg around this. Hundred percent. So maybe yeah. after the holidays. Thank you for having me. It's been amazing. I love it. Thank you all for listening to Very Delta. You can now search for Very Delta on your podcast apps. We come out every single Monday, and you can find us here on the Mom Podcasts YouTube channel. Also, a special hello to everyone watching the talk show on YouTube. Love you. Thank you for watching. We appreciate it. Also, you know what's Very Delta? Subscribing to Mom Podcasts so you don't miss an episode. You can send all of your questions to readmedelta at gmail.com, and you can follow me on Instagram as just Delta Work. And we also have dedicated socials on the new Very Delta across TikTok and Instagram. So you can check us out there. Join me next week right here. And until then, keep things Very Delta. To listen to Very Delta one day early and ad-free, sign up for Mom Plus at mompodcasts.plus. Very Delta is produced by Moguls of Media, a.k.a. Mom. Hosted by Delta Work and produced by Mark Jacobs. Engineered by Margot Padilla and editing by Doug Robertson. Executive produced by Willem Belli, Alaska Thunderfuck, Big Dipper, and Joe Cilio. Hold up. 